Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome to the Audio Boom Group PLC Investor Presentation relating to the Q1 2020 trading update. Throughout this presentation, investors will be in listen only mode. Questions encouraged. It can be submitted anytime via the Q&A tab situated in the right-hand corner of your screen. Simply type in your question and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the presentation itself. However, the company review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it's appropriate to do so. These will be available via your Investor Meet Company dashboard and you'll be notified once they're ready for your review. I'd also like to remind you this presentation is being recorded. Before we begin, we'd like to submit the following poll. And I'd now like to hand you over to Stuart Lars, CEO and Brad Clark, CFO of Audio Boom Group PLC. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good morning from uh, from New York City. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm here in New York. Brad's in the UK. I'm um, just really pleased. I think that you could all join us to uh, hear a little bit more about progress with an audio boom. Uh, I think we've we've got some fantastic news to to to, to talk through. A really strong uh, Q1 for us. Uh, we'll take a look at everything that's driving that strong performance for us. We'll look at the company strategy and talk a little bit more um, about uh, where we're going over over the, the next nine months or of 2021 and and beyond uh, and then at the end um, we have uh, lots of questions already coming through lots of questions pre-submitted so uh, looking forward to, to answering a few of those those questions with you uh, we'll jump straight in uh, usually I think I, I, I like to talk a little bit about the, the position of the company and, and uh, the, the, the company strategy at the top here but you know I, I think today um, we'll just dive right in on, on our Q1 results that, that you'll already have, have seen I think um, but we're very proud of the progress within the company um, and a, a very strong quarter for audio boom so um, you know just to, to, to talk through those results uh, fantastic uh, quarter for 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 revenue uh, record revenue of 9.5 million dollars um, that was up 49 percent on the year on Q1 2020 uh, and I want to just kind of reiterate this point that that growth percentage, that 49% year-on-year growth, um, was benchmarked by the only non-COVID impacted uh, quarter of, of, of 2020. So, um, you know, we really started to see the, the, the COVID impact in the second quarter, um, just because of the way our advertising contracts work. Our advertisers uh, have 30-day out clauses in those contracts, um, which meant when COVID hit in the middle of March, uh, they were not able to, uh, to 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 come out of those contracts uh, until April, so we saw no real uh, impact in that first quarter of, of 2020. Um, and so, to have 49% year-on-year growth, I think, against the non-COVID impacted uh, quarter, um, it is very very strong. And if you kind of think about where we're going across the, the rest of this year. Um, you know, you're going to start to see some some, some very high uh, percentages there when we look back at those uh, those soft Q2 and Q3s of, of last year. So expect to see some uh, some some very good uh, growth metrics. I think when we when we compare against those COVID impacted quarters of, of last year. The other point I want to make on that 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 uh, strong revenue number is the sequential growth, the 12% growth against Q4 of, of, of 2020, which was at 8.5 million. So we added a million dollars uh, quarter to, to quarter. And the key thing there is that usually we will see a, uh, a softening of advertiser demand in the first quarter of each year. That's a, a seasonal impact that uh, our business has, that the industry has, and, and then the wider um, media ad supported business has. We did not see that this year. Uh, we've been able to kind of uh, ride the growth of, of, of the industry, uh, drive pricing, keep that demand high from advertisers, uh, and, and therefore we've we've grown quarter on quarter, which is, I think is a, a fantastic result. But the big one that we were really focused on, uh, and you know, uh, when I presented uh, the story of Audio Boom back at the start of this year, uh, we really looked at making sure and being super super hyper focused on Audio Boom uh, being profitable. In 2021, and I'm really pleased to say uh, that for for Q1 uh, of 2021, uh, we had our maiden adjusted EBITDA profitable quarter of uh, of thirty thousand dollars, which sets us up really well for for the year. So, you know, all in all, uh, record quarterly performance, record revenue, fantastic growth story year to year and, and quarter to quarter, uh, and then to be profitable so early in the year, I think that just uh, just sets us up for, for an incredible year ahead, something we're, we're, we're very pleased with at Audio Boom. 
This next slide I, I really wanted to put in here because I, I just wanted to talk to you about the Audio Boom's unique value proposition. And I think you'll see that coming through uh, in, in the slides where I talk to you about what is driving performance and what will drive performance and, and growth of this company. And I think the, the, the key part of our value performance is this combination of platform and content. So in the early part of, of Audio Boom's existence, um, 2014 to 2018 years, the company was very focused on building out a platform. That's the, the technology platform for the hosting and distribution of podcast content. It's the ad tech and the advertising marketplace, which dynamically inserts advertising into content uh, and connects with various programmatic ad exchanges and, and networks globally. And then it's the premium sales platform and inventory management system that, that sits on, on, on top of that. Those parts of the platform are very, very scalable. So right now we deliver around 8,000 podcast content channels through the platform. The platform is scalable to the point where we could easily deliver 100,000 uh, podcast channels through that, that, that platform. Um, and it's, uh, it, it doesn't require any further investment to, to take it to that level of scale. So that platform is really driving the, the business from beneath. And then on top of that, over the past uh, two to three years, the second phase of Audio Boom is really scaling the content that, that sits on that platform and runs through that platform. So we have around 91 million downloads per month running through that platform. Uh, we're reaching 25 million unique users every single month through that platform. And really our, our, our focus and our future focus and future investment will be growing out that, 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 that content on top of the platform. And that comes in three main ways. Um, that's Audio Boom's own productions, our original content and, and, the, and the productions that we work on in-house. It's our partnerships with third party and independent podcast producers, those top tier publishers uh, that have podcasts in the, you know, the top 100 podcast charts on Apple and Spotify. And then thirdly, it's the work that we do with our hobbyist and enthusiast level uh, podcast partners, those subscribers that pay us $10 or, or $20 a month to use our platform and our tool sets. Smaller podcasts, um, but uh, again, part of the, the growing uh, content expansion business. So um, very much these two things work hand in hand. It's very unique to Audio Boom. Uh, we really are one of the only uh, podcast businesses in the world that have both of those elements, the technology and platform element combined with the, the content element. And you look at the, the M&A activity in the space over the past two years from the likes of Spotify, Amazon, uh, Sirius XM, iHeartMedia, that has all been focused around putting these two elements together, focused on acquiring content and focused on acquiring technology. Audio Boom is very unique in that we have both of those parts in the business and that has really been driving this, uh, this strong performance uh, over the past 18 months and will continue to do so going forward. And when we look at that first quarter strong performance, there's uh, four or five key reasons that I wanted to, to talk about as to, as to why that performance has been so strong. And this really relates to uh, that, that content operation and that content expansion that, that, that I just talked to. Um, you know, the first one here is just uh, the, the incredible show retention that we have at Audio Boom, very low churn. Um, we uh, grow those partnerships, work very organically with the hosts and the producers of those independent podcasts. And when we renew deals, we're renewing them for 24 months or 36 months. So these are long-term partnerships. And just in that quarter, uh, during Q1, we have, uh, we, we've we renewed partnerships with shows that deliver more than $6 million of annual revenue. So True Crime Obsessed and the Obsessed, Net Obsessed Network, our partnership with Formula One to produce and monetize their shows, uh, our partnership with, with The Morning Toast and, and, and many others have been renewed. So very strong renewals. Um, that leads to good organic growth through their increases in audience uh, over time. And as I said, more than $6 million of annual revenue renewed uh, through those uh, show retentions. The second part uh, that we've been very pleased with that, again, has, has, has driven much of that, that growth in Q1 is the work we're doing around Audio Boom Originals and a slight shift in focus around Audio Boom Originals as well. So we released two big shows um, produced uh, and co-produced in-house by the Audio Boom production teams. The first one is Relax with Colin Ballinger. The second, Dark Air with, with Terry Carnation, which is written and stars Reen Wilson from the US version of, of The Office. They are our, our biggest two uh, podcast hits to date, original content hits to date. 
And really that's come from a, a slight change of focus with, with what we're doing with Audio Boom Originals. Here we are now focused on working with bigger talent and leveraging that talent to drive audience. Um, so before we, we were creating more shows, but they were less impactful. Uh, right now we are focused on working with big talent, making each one of those launches more impactful, uh, reaching new audience and then uh, driving those shows uh, to commercially successful places. Obviously, the, the third part of, 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 our, uh, of this and, and, and the, the real driver of our growth uh, and our expansion around content is signing new premium level partnerships. Like I said, these are shows that appear in the top 100 of iTunes. They are professional level podcasts. Um, and again, just in the, the last three months, uh, we have signed some major shows both in the UK and the US that will form part of our premium network going forward. And then, of course, we're riding some very strong industry tailwinds. So. If you look at the podcast industry, particularly here in the US, the organic audience growth is, has, has been very fast uh, over the past year. So in the last uh, Edison Research Infant Dial study, there was a 17% increase in the number of US adults consuming podcasts on a weekly basis. Additionally, there was a 14% increase in the number of episodes that each one of those listeners was consuming. Those two numbers combined are driving the consumption of podcasts podcast and we've seen that within audio boom and we've seen a, a very strong increase in the amount of consumption of our podcasts that leads to the creation of uh of more and more ad inventory for us to sell we can sell at our higher prices and again we drive the performance of the network uh by riding those industry tailwinds so that content growth all of all of those items are growing our, our content footprint um on top of our very scalable um podcast platform and I think one thing that, that I'm really proud of and I, I wanted to note here was our position within the industry as a result of that, that, that content and growth. We have moved up in the Triton Digital Ranker to be the fourth largest podcast company in the US uh, on their ranker uh, by, uh, by terms of unique weekly reach. And that's an incredible step for us as a small business. If you look at our competitive set, uh, we are performing so strongly. Uh, uh, Stitcher is a company that's owned by Sirius XM, a multi-billion dollar radio company. Entercom, another multi-billion dollar radio company. Westwood One as well. Wondery were just acquired by Amazon for $300 million. NPR is the equivalent of, of the BBC here in the US. So we are uh, in and amongst a, a very well-funded and very well-resourced competitive set. Uh, and we are outpacing uh, the growth of these companies. We've moved up from sixth position in 2020 to fourth position in early 2021. Uh, we are we are increasing our market share, uh, and uh, like I said, we are we are outperforming the wider industry on it, pretty much every metric right now. So um, Audio Boom is, is moving quickly. We have great momentum. Um, I'm very happy to kind of take that into the next part of the year. When I think about uh, what the platform delivers to Audio Boom, we've talked about how uh, our focus on content growth has expanded the, the, the level of content and the level of advertising inventory that we have within the business. The platform is driving the demand, is driving the pricing, is driving revenue optimization. And that's why the platform is so important to the Audio Boom business uh, alongside the, the content operation. So some key points, I think, from the first quarter, again, for driving that growth. Um, our premium advertising demand that's, that's the, the, the top 200 shows in our network. It's those uh, live reads or host reads that are embedded into the, the fabric of the show. Uh, they are high value units. We've seen no traditional Q1 seasonal drop off. Uh, like I mentioned before, we usually see a slowdown in, in that advertising in the first quarter. We did not see that this year. And, and when you look at the, uh, uh, what that means in a more uh, detailed way, our top 15 shows had a 97% fill rate uh, across that quarter, which is an incredibly strong performance. So there is high demand from advertisers for those top performing shows. And to be at 97% sellout for, for the first quarter uh, was, a, was a very strong performance for us. As a result of that demand and as of the, the unique way we sell advertising for those premium shows, we've been able to drive up pricing as well. So our average unit rate, the average price to buy one unit in one advertising unit in one of our top uh, podcasts uh, has 
uh, has grown by 22% since last year. And that's driven by organic audience growth. There's now more audience listening to each one of those shows so we can charge more more money there. That's also demand um, more customers and advertisers trying to buy that content. So uh, we're doing a very good job of increasing the pricing across the entire network. And then thirdly, uh, an integral and, and, and growing uh, an area of the, of the platform that's growing in importance is our ad tech platform. So while our top 200 shows in the first 90 days after an episode launches, uh, we monetize through those high value embedded advertising units. The long tail of shows, the rest of the 8,000, um, plus those top tier shows once an episode gets to 90 days old, those are monetized in a different way through uh, advertising technology, dynamically inserting advertising into those pre-roll, mid-roll, and post-roll advertising slots in a piece of content. Whether a piece of content is 90 days old or five years old, we can uh, we can push fresh ads and re-monetize that, that content. Um, and I think until 2019, we'd seen relatively uh, flat performance from the, uh, the ad tech and the monetization from the ad tech. Uh, we've done a very good job of increasing that over the past two years. And, and revenue from ad tech, in Q1 was up 316% on the previous year. So we are opt optimizing uh, the monetization of our podcasts, particularly around the archives and the, the, the long tail of our 8,000 shows that we work with. All in all, um, the, the platform combined with that increase in the, in the content operation has driven incredibly strong performance in the first quarter of the year. And as a result, um, our analyst has, has upgraded the market expectation for, for Audio Boom. So just to run you through those details, if you haven't seen them, our 2021 revenue expectation is now $37.5 million. Um, that would be a 40% increase on, on 2020's revenue number. And obviously, that was previously set at $35.4 So um, a step up to $37.5 is our revenue expectation for the year. Our uh, adjusted EBITDA expectation is now $50,000. Um, and that's versus a $1.7 million loss uh, last year in 2020. And for the first time, we've also introduced 2022 expectations as well. So the 2022 revenue expectation uh, currently sits at 45 million, and the adjusted EBITDA uh, expectation is a profit of 1.1 million dollars. So uh, we've welcomed the the upgrade uh, of of that expectation uh, by our analyst, uh, and we look forward to uh, to performing against that. And we're very confident that we will uh, will hit those numbers. And for the next few slides, I will uh, I'll throw over to Brad, uh, who can run you through some of the, the financials uh, in a little more detail. Great. Thanks, Stuart. Uh, thanks also to everyone for joining. Um, I'm Brad, CFO, been with Audio Boom for the last three years. Um, what I wanted to do on, on this slide is, uh, you know, in, in um, this announcement and previous announcements, we said, the, you know, the company's got very good cost control. And I wanted to display here what that actually means. Um, we've displayed here our total OPEX base for the last two years, and you can see the average um, across that period is, is $2 million. And if you extended it back into 2018, you see that the 2018 average is uh, $1.9 million. So we've been able to um, maintain that control on our, on our cost base at $2 million while we've driven that impressive top line revenue growth. So as Stuart said, 49% year on year. If you go over two years, it's 106%. Um, in terms of the, um, the the breakdown of our of our opex, the, uh, the the main area of cost within the business is uh, salaries and commissions. Our, our sales staff are incentivized through commission to drive that drive that top line revenue growth. Um, uh, next biggest bucket of, of costs is our technology costs, our hosting and bandwidth costs, accounting for around 18%. Sorry, salaries and commissions account for around 66% of our of our cost base. And then we've got the other other categories there. But I'm very proud of that fact that we've managed to, like I say, maintain that cost base relatively consistent um, over the last two years while we've driven that really Im impressive market leading top line revenue growth. And um, I, I mentioned the major um, uh, cost category that we have. I say major, we've only actually got 35 staff within the business. So if you look from Q1 to uh, Q1 2019 to Q1 2021, we've actually reduced that account by, by 17%, albeit that's only a six head reduction. 
you know, the, the, the team within Audio have been very, very focused. Everyone's, you know, uh, got a specific role to help drive growth within within this business, and we, you know, fare very favourably um, when you look at our major competitor within within the UK and, and Europe. Uh, Acast at over three three hundred heads, uh, over ten times the the staff level of Audio Boom. So. You know, we we're, we're you know very very proud of that of, of that team um, to be able to keep that that performance um, going over over the last couple of years. Now, if we if you've listened to the previous presentations, I, I normally major on the the data collection side uh, of the business. Um, that continues to be the number one um, focus for our our three man finance team within Audio Boom, um, and we've started the. The, the year well at collecting over 8.5 million dollars averaging 2.8 million a month which is up 600k on the 2.2 million average uh, per per uh, per month in in 2020 now if you um I look at the graph on on the left hand side here what i've displayed is that you can see um uh, receivables in orange revenue blue um payables in gray and we've mapped that over the last two years and what you can see is the receivables have increased um, as we've gone through Q4 and Q1, the company's largest largest quarters in terms of in terms of revenue. Now, um, in terms of the actual analysis uh, analysis of those receivables, the actual debtor days have decreased since the year end from 87 down to down to 71. Um, and as I said before, the, the collection profile of the of the group is is really quite strong. So, you'll note in the, in the trading update, cash decrease from end of December to the end of March by 1.1 million from 3.3 down to 2.2 but it's important and um, when you look at the look at the company in my view is to look at the total asset value of the company so cash and debtors and if you look at the uh, end of December and, and the end of March that figure is consistent at 9.5 million so the impact of scaling a business and growing a business is that there are those shifts on the balance sheet from from cash to um, cash to debtors um, it's also important to note that in the quarter we paid 0.7 million um, to uh, a third party talent uh, podcast partners in recoupable advances so that does impact the working capital of the business um, so in order to retain attract help fund uh, podcast partners we do offer as part of certain uh, uh, certain contracts recoupable advances and they are fully recoupable over the life of the deal um, you reduce future payments by um, by proportion of the advance so that does impact uh, working capital within the business so we paid 0.7 million of those advances in the first quarter um, so that just gives us a, a little bit of an insight there in terms of the working capital of, of the business. Um, in terms of payables, they remain consistent uh, between the end of December and uh, the end of March, 4.3 million at the end of March, 4.1 at the end of December. Um, so we, you know, we can see that clearly, uh, you know, the, the business is growing, um, but in terms of our processes in-house, you know, we're, we're excellent and I, I view us as market leading in terms of the podcast sector, in terms of the actual collection profile um, and processes that we have within the business. Um, further note, just in terms of the resources available available to the company, we've also got access to a further 3.3 million um, of the SPV investments loan, and we haven't drawn, don, drawn down on that in, in the first quarter, so that's still available to the company um, should, we, should we require it. Okay. Back to you, Stuart. Oops. Thanks, Brad. I'm going to show uh, show you all. I think a, a few uh, good looking charts here. Um, charts are he all heading in the right direction um, when we look at our KPIs. Uh, and the first one is a new KPI. Um, this is our global downloads uh, data point. Uh, and we brought this in because it's more of an industry standard metric. Um, it allows us to uh, compare Audio Boom's growth versus the growth of, of our competitors. Um, it's measured by the Interactive Advertising Bureau's podcast measurement standard um, and is verified by our measurement uh, partner, Triton Digital. So um, this is a, a very reliable stat. It's been something that we have been tracking uh, since the start of last year, although we've only uh, included it as a KPI um, from, from this year. Uh, forwards. Um, and here you'll see some fantastic growth um, from 64, 63 million downloads uh, on average per month uh, a year ago uh, to 87 million downloads per month on average uh, in Q1 of, of 2020. So that's 37% growth year on year. 
And I just want to call out the March 2021 number, um, you know, 91.6 million, another huge step forward. So this is showing the results of our focus on our content expansion strategy. Um, it, it's coming to, together very well. We're increasing and scaling up the, the size of our content business. Our second KPI is our, uh, our brand advertiser count. Um, this is the number of advertisers that we work with directly through our premium sales network. So this doesn't include the, the hundreds and, and thousands of advertisers that, that come through our ad tech. Um, these are the ones that we work with, these are the customers that we work with uh, in a very one-to-one uh, -one way. Uh, and they advertise on our uh, biggest 200 podcasts, uh, uh, buying those high value units. Um, and I think the, the, the key points to, to, to focus on here are, uh, if you look at Q1 of, of 2020, you'll see a, a, a dip. Uh, and that's that seasonal dip that I, I've talked about, that drop off uh, in the first quarter of, of the year. So we saw that last year, um, but this year I'm very pleased that we maintained, uh, exactly maintained actually, the, uh, the, the level of, of brands that we work with um uh it, from q4 of last year in, into q1 of 2021 so that's clearly a, a big driver of our performance uh in the first quarter of this year and then our third uh our third kpi and this one this one's my favorite and, and many of you may have heard me talk in, in detail about this one before this one is the one we call our ecpm and it's it's effectively it's a uh, a measurement of the value that we are extracting from every 1,000 downloads of our ad-supported content. So it's an optimization metric. It's how well we are monetizing uh, that 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 content. Um, and we've seen very good growth uh, in, in in this KPI. If this was to go back as far as the start of 2018, you would see a $13 number at the at the start of 2018, um, and and we most recently hit a record of, of, of over $40. Um, for, for Q1 of, of 2021. Again, here you will see that dip, um, that COVID impact in Q2 and in Q3 of, of, of last year before uh, we, we, we got back on a, another good upward trajectory. So um, the key points here, I think, on, on this KPI um, are that there is, is, is a lot of headroom here for us to continue that, that growth. So we're up to $40. I think there is a, a kind of a ceiling somewhere around the $150 mark on this KPI. And, and let me break that down for you, that the, the reason why each podcast or each podcast episode generally has around four to five individual ad units in it. We sell on average each one of those units for around a $25 CPM. That's $25 per thousand downloads. So a full episode uh, has around $125 of value attached to it. If we were to sell every single podcast uh, fully out, 100% sellout rate, our ECPM would be in and around that $125 mark. So you can see we've made great progress here, but we still uh, have a lot of opportunity to, here to continue to optimize our sales function. Um, I showed you that stat earlier where 97% fill out rate against our top 15 shows. Um, obviously, that's going to drive the ECPM higher. But as we go further down our list of shows, the long tail of shows, again, the, the optimization drops off a little bit. So we're very good at fully optimizing our top shows. Uh, and we're working very hard now to, to continue to optimize the entire group, drive this ECPM KPI uh, even higher. And like I said, somewhere around uh, uh, $125 is, is the ceiling on, on, this, uh, on this KPI. So just a reminder, and just to talk through again, um, you know, Audio Boom's growth strategy. Uh, I think it, we, we've what we've done a very good job of uh, in the past eighteen months is being very clear on how we will grow this business, um, and it's all through through scaling that content on top of the the platform. And we do that in three ways. We do that through content acquisition, and that's the work we do with uh, third party and independent podcasters. We do that through making content. That's the work we do through Audio Boom Originals or through our production arm. So that shows like Dark Air, which we just released. Uh, those are our, that's our partnership with Formula One where we are producing that content for, for, the, for the partner. So that's where we're making content. And Sonic Influence, Influence on market, Marketing, which is our business down in Austin, Texas, um, they are focused on accessing content. So what that platform does uh, is allow allows us to access advertising inventory in podcasts that don't belong to the Audio Boom network. Effectively, they can monetize podcast content uh, 
wherever that podcast is affiliated. So they, whichever network it belongs to or publisher it belongs to, Sonic Influencer Marketing can monetize that content by working with clients and brands to, uh, to, to, to access that advertising inventory. So those three things together, that's, that's growing our content operation, our content footprint, and is the, the kind of the key between, around the next four to five years growth within this business. And the last slide for me, I think, before we get to, to questions, um, and, and this is really like, you know, what we're looking at across 2021 and, and how set for continued growth we are. I think the, the first point to make uh, is that we have incredible revenue visibility within the business. So um, at this point, we are 90% booked to our original $35.4 million revenue expectation and 85% booked to the upgraded 37. percent $0.5 million um, expectation. So again, that, that having that visibility on the revenue fills us with a lot of confidence that we will uh, will outperform uh, the number that's in the market today. So um, we're all set to, to, to go through that across the year. Um, another point here in how we are underpinning that revenue performance is how we are selling the inventory on our top shows. So um, let me kind of give you a little bit of background. Uh, as the industry has professionalized over the past few years, uh, we now go through uh, an upfront process where we open up uh, sales to our biggest customers uh, in October and November of the year before. They can buy across our entire roster at uh, slightly discounted prices. Uh, the good thing for us is we get money on the books uh, and, and for our smaller shows, that's fantastic because uh, they we can see the support across our smaller shows for, for the entire year. For our larger shows, we now hold back that inventory. We don't allow our, cost, our top customers to buy that inventory for Q3 and Q4 uh, during that upfront discounted uh, process. And that allows us to drive higher pricing on on our top shows in Q3 and Q4. So we've got to that 90% of market forecast booking number, and we've only just opened up Q3 inventory on our bigger shows, and we won't open up Q4 inventory on our bigger shows uh, until June. So we know that there is, uh, there's still a lot of inventory there to sell on some of our bigger shows. And again, that gives us a lot of confidence that we will uh, go above and beyond those market expectations. Uh, another partnership uh, that we just announced was with Map Media uh, in the UK. That partnership will monetize, again, our archives and our long tail through those uh, ad tech um, and dynamically inserted advertising impressions while Audio Boom's in-house team concentrates on those premium units. Again, this is another partnership around optimization. Um, and that partnership began on April 1st. So the Q1 strong performance uh, doesn't recognize any of the revenue that we will drive through our partnership with, with Map Media. We'll see that start to see that revenue coming through in, in Q2 and, and beyond. Um, and then similarly, we've we've just announced three global sales partnerships. So for me, this is a very efficient way of, of stepping into other global markets. Um, as you may know, previously, we did have an operation on the ground in India. Uh, we, we shut down that operation uh, last year. It was a very inefficient way of working in a very unique market. Um, so I think as we as we grow, uh, we will develop partnerships in, in new territories that we want to expand into, and, and that will be the, the efficient way of, of doing business there. The Australian Radio Network is our partner in Australia. Uh, we have worked with them in the past, whereby they were able to monetize just a handful of our top podcasts. The new partnership that we have with them that started on April 1st allows them to monetize the entire roster of 8,000 podcasts in Australia. So again, that will be new revenue that uh, is coming through that partnership that we won't have seen uh, any of in, in, in Q1, and we'll see that from Q2 onwards. Uh, Rogers Media partnership we actually first announced in uh, in the fall of and in autumn of, of last year. Um, again, that partnership uh, is now coming through, and Rogers Media in Canada, which is our fourth biggest market, uh, those campaigns are now being sold from April onwards. So again, we will start to see revenue coming through that partnership uh, across this year. 
And then Idea Brew Studios, which is our, uh, a more efficient way of doing business in India. India is our fifth biggest market. Idea Brew Studios will sell our inventory in India and also the Middle East. And that partnership launched on April 15th. So again, more new revenue coming through those optimization partnerships uh, across the year. So these items combine just a few of the reasons why uh, we're very confident on, uh, on, on outperforming those market expectations. Um, and you know, I think and I, I hope you'll be pleased to see that we're, we've set ourselves up for a really strong year in 2021 um, and we are we're growing in a, in a very good way um, and we're excited about what the, the, the next nine months will give us. That's fantastic. Uh, Stuart Brad, thank you very much indeed for your presentation. Um, ladies and gentlemen, do please continue to submit your questions using the Q&A tab situated in the right-hand corner of your screen. But just while the company take a few moments to review those investor questions submitted already, I'd like to remind you the recording of the presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A can be accessed via your investor dashboard on the Investor Me company platform. I'd also like to remind you that your feedback is important to the company and immediately after the presentation is ended, you'll be redirected for the opportunity to provide feedback in order that the company can better understand your views and expectations. Um, Stuart, Brad, we had obviously a number of questions uh, come in from investors, some of which you have covered off in the presentation itself, but perhaps I can pick up on these. Um, the first one reads as follows. Can you explain a little about how you look to expand your podcast network and strategic partnerships? And are there any new geographic regions you'd like to expand into? Yeah, I, th I think I touched on a, a couple of those points in in the uh, the presentation, um, but but there's there's definitely more detail I can give here. Um, you know, our growth plan is fully focused on on building out that content operation. Uh, those professional level creators are our in house content, and the, and those hobbyist and enthusiast level creators. Really, we can deliver value uh, to all podcasts of, of, of any size. But when you when you focus on on that key revenue driver of of the professional tier, those top two hundred shows that that we work with, those independent publishers the majority of, of of that growth and that new opportunity comes to our relationships with the main hollywood talent agency so we've spent the last three to four years building very strong relationships at uta at wme at caa and then a whole host of, of other management companies and, and talent representation um, and that that's that's delivering us greater opportunity um, to partner with uh, with big podcasts than, than ever before. So I would say today, uh, if I was to look at our business development pipeline, we would have more than 10 individual uh, proposals uh, in with talent agents uh, to, to, to sign and, and to partner with existing podcasts. They all have strong built-in audiences. Um, they would all fit into our premium network of, of, of 200 top shows. They would all be delivering more than a quarter million dollars of revenue each year. So we have 10 proposals in on any given day um, to, to work with new shows. Uh, most of those are in the US. Uh, increasingly, we are starting to, to work with talent reps in, in the UK too, as that market develops, but, but the majority of, of, of that work is, is, is in the US. Uh, and as I kind of said before, I think right now we are mainly US and, and UK focused when it comes to uh, expanding on the content side. Uh, but those partnerships that I just talked through in Australia and Canada and India, um, those are they're really focused on, on sales in other territories. And that's, I think, the work that we'll do in other territories over the next two years, just that, that, that sales piece. And then I think, you know, one other uh, key point is, um, you know, while we are doing this, this great work with the, the talent agencies to, to, to partner and to, to bring in the big shows, our biggest show that we, that we partner with today uh, is a show that will deliver more than $3 million of, of revenue this year. Um, and that show started life as a uh, subscription show. So this highlights the importance of the audio boom tech platform as a, as a, as a, as well as a funnel for business development. So that show joined us two years ago. Um, they signed up to our subscription platform. Uh, they paid us $10 a month for the, the first few months. Um, internally, we have a, a bunch of, of, of flags that are set up to highlight shows where we're seeing audience growth. We saw really strong audience growth with that show. We reached out to that show, made a personal connection with that show. Uh, when the audience got big enough, we moved them up into our, our middle tier of, of, of advertising, those lower value uh, ad tech based units. We worked with the show around best practice, how, helped them grow their audience. Again, once the audience got big enough, we moved them up into our premium tier and started to monetize through those high value host endorsements and, and, and live reads. Um, so that show has gone from uh, paying us $10 a month to work with us and to use our tool set 
uh, to delivering $3 million of, uh, of, of revenue this year. So, um, you know, on one hand, it's the fantastic work we do with, with the talent agencies to, to grow our, our content partnerships. And then on the other hand, our, our tech platform uh, will deliver that, that, that growth and, and that funnel of new business. Fantastic. Thank you, Stuart. The next one we've got here um, reads as follows. Back in late 2020, you noted that feedback from interested parties during the film or sale process highlighted the nascent stage of the company's original content and production operations. Can you compare where you are today versus this point last year, just to give uh, some sort of comparison? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've made good progress. Um, although, and I think one thing I would say is that building an original content and production business, just it's just not fast. So shows that we were developing last summer, uh, July and August of last year, those shows that, that were going into development there, those have, have only just been released. They've just gone out like like Dark Air and, and Relax in, uh, in, in February. So there's definitely this lag between the, the development phase and the investment into that content. Uh, and, and when you see the, the results of that content and that lag, that delay could be um, up to, to 10 to 12 months as you run through that development and production process uh, in order to have those high quality hits. I think what I am most um, impressed with and, and kind of pleased with is that shift of focus that, that I talked to you uh, a little, about a little bit earlier. So. You know, we've released fewer shows so far this year, but each one of them has made a, a much bigger impact. So uh, Relax was uh, a show that, that very quickly went to number one on the US Apple, uh, Apple podcast chart. Uh, Dark Air will be the biggest commercial success for, for any uh, audio boom uh, original. There's very strong revenue attached to that show. It was 90% uh, sold out before episode one uh, even launched. And that is because of that focus on working with high profile, uh, talent uh, and that focus on leveraging that that high profile talent to drive the success of the show so Colleen Ballinger the, the host of, of Relax um, she has uh, 50 million plus social media followers she has a huge YouTube channel when we launched that show we were able to leverage that audience uh, drive it to the podcast uh, and, and drive that show to number one uh, on, on the Apple chart and then as a result uh, we have strong audience to, to sell against and it's made that show very successful uh, Rain Wilson, the, the you know uh, the guy that we worked with uh, on Dark Air, um, you know he's a huge star, uh, star of the NBC version uh, of The Office, um, and as a result of, of his high profile, we've delivered, and we've we've just kind of calculated this in the last two days, somewhere around two hundred fifty thousand um, dollars of, of kind of free marketing, effectively. Uh, he's been a guest on radio morning shows. He's been a guest on TV morning shows here in the US. He's appeared on five of the top 50 podcasts. Uh, and just last week, he was a guest on James Corden's CBS late night show in, in, in the US as well. So um, people wanted him on as a guest. Um, that high profile made him attractive. He went on those shows. He talked about his new podcast. Uh, we built uh, a lot of conversation around that show before the before the show launch. And like I said before, that will be a um, you know a big commercial success for us. So this kind of shifting in uh, in focus to do less, but to make uh, each one of those uh, launches even more impactful than the last um, is something I'm very happy about. That's great. Thank you, Stuart. Sure. And uh, next question we've got from uh, Investor today is, uh, it reads as follows, great progress. Do you see the mo momentum you have continuing through the second half of 2021? I know you've covered this slightly on the um, presentation already. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the rest of 2021 is, is shaping up really, really well. And I talked about my confidence of, of going above the market expect expectation, but I think there's um, there's, there's even more things that, that you can look at to to, to get some confidence in, in, in where we're going. Um, you know, and as always, uh, content growth is, is kind of the key here. And we've got lots to get excited about. If you, you know, just going back to Dark Air, the Audio Boom original that I talked about a moment ago, um, you know, that's a, a big revenue driver. Um, you won't see the impact of that revenue into, until Q2 and Q3 results uh, are announced because that show didn't launch until April 1st. So new content dropping there uh, that we we're able to monetize very effective, effectively. Uh, back in January, we announced a partnership with a show called Fantasy Footballers. Uh, that's the biggest sports show uh, in the US. That delivers more than $2 million in, in annual revenue. But the key thing with this show is that is very seasonal. So more than 80% of the inventory 
um, attached to that $2 million in, in annual revenue. More than 80% of that inventory happens in the second half of the year. It happens around the NFL season that starts in, in late August. So again, we've signed that deal, but you're not going to see the impact and the revenue impact of, of that deal and, until the second half of the year too. So just you know, a couple of items there that, um, that, that we can be confident about We'll, 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 we'll keep that growth going for Audio Boom. And then, as I said earlier, I, I think, you know, at any one moment, we have more than 10 proposals in with talent agencies. We're very successful at turning those proposals into partnerships. You know, we are the, 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 the fourth biggest podcast business uh, in the U.S., People want to work with us. The, the talent agencies recognize that we do a fantastic job of, uh, of, of supporting their talent and their clients. Um, so we will turn those proposals uh, into partnerships. Um, so we're adding new con content all the time. Um, there will be you know, way more content to sell in Q3 and Q4 uh, than there was in Q1. And you can just see the, the continuation, I think, of, of, of that progress. Great, thank you, Stuart. Um, we've had a couple of questions around um, expectations, analyst expectations, but if I can just read this one out. Um, are the analysts upgraded market expectations too conservative, given that you're already 85% of the way to the upgraded revenue? For that? I think, um, I think I, I'm comfortable and, and happy with where they are right now. We are still early in the year. Um, you know, plans last year were, were were hit by something that we didn't see coming in, in, in COVID. I think it's... Uh, you know, it, it's it's good to err on on the conservative side this early in the year. You know, we were in the second week of, of, of April, so you know, I, I think I am comfortable there. I think I think the point I do want to highlight though is, is just how Audio Boom has changed over those past eighteen months. You know, we now have this very clear growth strategy that the entire team, uh, the board. Uh, our analysts are, are, are all very kind of aware of and focused on. Um, so when we do talk to you about uh, legitimate when we do talk to you about growth opportunities, they are legitimate growth opportunities, right? They're very, very real. And as a result, um, we now do deliver on our goals. And I think that's very important. I think that means that, you know, you can see that, that, that we, we, uh, you know, we do meet those expectations. Uh, we now have a, you know, a, a history of the last 18 months of, of, of achieving what we set out to do. Um, and so you can, you know, you can be confident in, in, in what we're doing. Um, and I do think, you know, we, we, uh, are confident to go in above and, and beyond that that current uh, or that upgraded expectation. But let's let's just make sure we do. Let's get there. Let's make sure we do, and then let's talk about where those expectations go. That's great. Thanks, Jim. Um, next question we have here is around uh, your cost base. The cost base has been steady at circa sort of two million per quarter. How much does this need to increase in the next mm. two years to actually continue this pace of growth? You know, I think you know. I, I talked a little bit about the the unique value proposition of that platform that underpins all all of all of that content. Um, and I think the first thing to say is that there's no real investment needed into that platform. It can host and, and distribute the eight thousand shows that it does today, uh, but it's fully scalable to a hundred thousand without any real a, a additional cost. Um, the other part is growing our partnerships with independent podcasts doesn't really add to our cost uh, either. You know, we will keep that premium network at around 200 shows, but each of the shows in that network will just be bigger and bigger and bigger than the year before. So we're not really paying money or increasing cost to service those top 200 uh, content partnerships. The key area of investment for us is Audio Boom Originals and the production business. Um, and that does require investment in staffing, um, investment in in marketing and growing audiences uh, to, to make audio boom original uh, audio boom originals a bigger part of, of what we do and we have a goal around that you know to go from five percent of our revenue attached to audio boom originals to to fifteen percent of our of our revenue attached to, to audio boom originals in the coming coming years I think um, you know much of that focus has been um in the us to this point but we will start to grow a uh, content creation business an original content business in the uk um later on this year uh reasons for that uh there's a, a big gap in the market we feel for a, a commercial content creator uh, the market is not too crowded um, audience acquisition costs are lower uh, competition is lower 
And then the other thing is there's a huge amount of uh, strong production talent, uh, ex-BBC program makers um, that we can uh, utilize to build out that, that UK uh, content creation. And it's very economical to hire in the UK too. So uh, a producer in the US uh, costs around 75% more uh, than in the UK. So uh, hence the reason we will focus uh, some of, 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 of that uh, original content growth in, in the UK. UK too. So costs will increase because we do want to grow out the uh, the uh, original content part of the business and audio boom originals. Um, but it's mostly around the original content where that gross margin is significantly higher, um, around 40% uh, versus the, the company-wide average uh, of 22%. So Yes, there's increased cost, but it's going to lead to, uh, to, to revenue that has a higher margin attached to it. And, you know, I think what you're going to see is um, because of, of, of that very good cost control, um, you will start to see that gearing effect come through um, in, over the next couple of years, driving the EBITDA performance, uh, you know, higher. Um, so, yeah, there'll be some so, some increase in, in, in cost. It won't be dramatic and it will drive a stronger performance for the business. That's great. Uh, thank you very much indeed. And we've had a couple of questions as well, sort of around your, your major shareholder. But let me just pick this one for you. Um, what do you know of your major shareholders feelings about the future path of the business? Yeah, I mean, I'd say that we are we're pleased right now that we um, just have the space to focus on on growing the business through uh, through the, the, the strategy that, that I talked to you about today. Um, you know, uh, Again, I think for the, the, the first time in a long time, uh, over the, the, the past year or so, our shareholders like, fully understand what we're doing, why we're doing it, and what our opportunities are. Um, they understand that, that we're really now hitting our stride, um, that we have strong growth ahead of us, um, and we, we have strong growth ahead of us independently in, 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 in the near term. So um, having that, that, that space is, has been very powerful to us, and, and, and um, we're glad to have that. Um, you know, I feel that the business needs to be free of distractions uh, for us to execute those plans. It hasn't been over the last few years, um, but it is now. And that's why I'm really excited to, to kind of keep growing this company um, and to keep growing this company really as the, the leading independent podcast business in the world. That's great. Thank you very much indeed, Stuart. I'm just conscious of time as we are coming up to, to uh, towards the end of the session um, and we have covered off uh, vast number of those questions that we've had through. I know there are some duplicates around certain subject areas. Um, but if there are any further questions that are submitted, the company will review all the questions submitted today and publish responses where appropriate to do so. And um, Stuart, perhaps then if I could just ask you just for a few final words, just to wrap up before we, we redirect investors to give you some feedback. Sure. I mean, I think firstly, just to, to say thank you uh, to, to everyone for joining us today. Uh, thank you for the su support in the business. Um, you know, we, we appreciate the questions. We appreciate the, the feedback. Um, we're an exciting place for the company. Um, really great start to the year. We've got a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, you know, I just think this is a, an exciting medium to be in. Fantastic industry to, to, to be in with, with really strong tailwinds. And um, Audio Boom is a business. Uh, you know, the fact that we just keep on outpacing the rest of the industry in terms of growth means that we have a fantastic future ahead of us. That's great. Thank you very much indeed, Stuart. And thank you, Brad, for updating investors today. Can I please ask investors not to close the session? You should be automatically redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback. If you've accessed the meeting from our website, the feedback page will be on fear in front of you. If you've accessed via the link sent you in an email, you'll be simply asked just to log back in and provide your feedback. Only takes a few minutes and is greatly appreciated by the company. On behalf of the management team of Audio Boom Group PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's session. That concludes the event.